I'm Dr. Wallace Johnson, Jr. My specialty, I'm actually general internal medicine, but actually went on to specialize to become a quote-unquote a hypertensologist or a hypertension specialist. Hypertension is just another word for high blood pressure. High blood pressure is something that, of course, people can have, and the end effect is the same. High blood pressure is being defined as pretty universally now by most groups as the blood pressure of greater than 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury. And the order is basically the large vessel which leads right out of the heart leading to different branches that go on to provide blood to the rest of the body. When you have a blood vessel in your body having a large amount of pressure behind it, so you can imagine if you make the blood pressure very, very high, you can put a lot more stress in the order causing first microscopic or small areas of damage, but then if you have certain kinds of susceptibility, you may find that you can cause large damage in very small areas, leading to things that we call aneurysms and ballooning, if you will, of the aorta. So if somebody has, for example, aortic disease, and let's say they're either A, predisposed to an aneurysm, then one thing that happens when the blood pressure is very, very high and it stays high, you put more stress on the blood vessel, the aneurysm is going to, of course, increase, get larger. And we know that when you actually have a curve that I was just looking at right before I came over that, as people's aneurysms enlarge, by the time, for example, in a male, an aneurysm gets to a diameter of about 5.5 centimeters, which is much larger than it should be for an aortic aneurysm, or just if it's an abdominal aorta, then you know that you increase your risk of having a rupture significantly, or the increase, of the increased risk of that aneurysm breaking open is significant. Now, what happens if you already have an aneurysm diagnosed? Let's say you have one already diagnosed and it has not ruptured that direct. The more that you allow that blood pressure to stay out of control, again, the more stress you put on that aneurysm. And even though you can get screened at regular intervals with different tests like CAT scans or ultrasounds or other imaging tests, you can still have that blood pressure be uncontrolled and making that aneurysm enlarge. And unfortunately, in some situations, people who have their blood pressure uncontrolled can have the aneurysm rupture even before they get a chance to get back into the doctor. And once that aneurysm ruptures, your chance of death increases exponentially. It's much harder for the surgeons to be able to do anything. So it's time sensitive. It's definitely related to how you manage your blood pressure and always watch out for what I like to call the three R's sometimes, for example, with aortic dissection, which if it's something comes on, you have a rapid onset of pain. If it's a ripping feeling like with the pain, or if it feels like the pain is radiating from one area from the above the body to the other, let's say if it goes from the chest to the back, down to the abdominal area, that's an indication that, yeah, you need to get seen, you need to get seen quickly. And if you have uncontrolled blood pressure and have been told before that you're in part of a high risk group, then you need to know that as soon as you have any of those potentially life-threatening symptoms that may be related to aortic aneurysm, you have a very, very short window in many cases to get to emergency care. So understand, you know, don't be late, don't hesitate. I always say I love getting to the emergency room a day early rather than a day late. Vascular surgeons and other organizations have now been big proponents of having people get screened if they particularly fall into the group of male either smokers or former smokers. So if you're a male and you're middle-aged and you either smoke now or used to smoke significantly in the past, you need to be asking your doctor, should I be screened for aortic disease? This is an opportunity for all of us to intervene because we all know when you make the diagnosis of an aneurysm in the emergency room, and the aneurysm ruptures or breaks open, if you will, the mortality, if you will, the death rate goes up exponentially. So the opportunity to intervene is when you have certain high-risk groups, male smokers are the ones that they're targeting right now, but just anybody who has a situation where you have a family history and not sure, I use the expression all the time for my patients, when in doubt, check it out. If you're not sure if you should be screened, if you're asking the question, it's already put you at a high enough level of concern to ask your physician whether or not you need to be screened. So let's watch out for our male smokers. But we also need to keep in mind, too, people who have high blood pressure that's hard to control also need to be asking the question, too, should I be screened? Should there be other testing I could do to find out if I have what I call primary or secondary hypertension. Secondary hypertension is simply high blood pressure, if you will, that's secondary to an identifiable cause. And if you have that, you want to identify it because if it's a reversible or treatable identifiable cause, that's what you want to fix.